Welcome to the Library Summer Reading Program. We're going to be digging deeper into wildlife, and today we're doing a virtual video tour of Treehouse Wildlife Center. So I thought we'd stop in today and ask them about creepy crawly things. So come on, let's go on in. Hi, Treehouse Wildlife Center. We're here from the library. Hi, my name's Rachel. How can I help you? Well, we were interested in creepy crawlies. What can you tell us? That is a great topic. Let's take a closer look. So, what is a creepy crawly? When most people think of a creepy crawly, they think of small crawly creatures like bugs. There are all kinds of creepy crawlies like ants, spiders, and slugs. A lot of creepy crawlies creep people out, but don't be afraid. Creepy crawlies are important for lots of different reasons. Did you know that ants are gardeners and help spread the seeds of different plants? Or that worms make soil better for plants to grow? Or that bees pollinate our crops, which help us grow fruits and vegetables? Or that spiders as a whole eat up to 880 million tons of other bugs each year? Creepy crawlies are also an important food source for all types of animals, such as birds, frogs, and even opossums. Did you know that creepy crawlies have really cool abilities? For instance, a caterpillar can eat thousands of times its body weight in just a few weeks and then transform into a beautiful butterfly. Flies can see almost all the way around their body without having to turn their head like we do. They can also taste with their feet. Ants can live, lift 50 times their own body weight. That would be like a human picking up a car. Check out some of our awesome creepy crawly friends here at Treehouse. Here we have Maddie, the Madagascar hissing cockroach. And then down here, we have Darwin, who's a rose-haired Chilean tarantula. A tarantula? Oh my gosh. That reminds me of a story. Miss Spider's Tea Party. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed, who'd stay a while with me, I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and tea. Two timid beetles, Ike and May, crept from the woodwork that same day. But when Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. Three fireflies flew inside that night, their spirits high, their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fear. We'd better get away from here. The little trio did not feel they'd care to be a spider's meal. Four bumblebees buzzed by outside. Please come to tea, Miss Spider cried. The four ignored her swaying there. She waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped the glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We would be fools to take our tea with anyone so spidery. Within the shadows of the room, just peeking from behind a broom, five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled. Her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook, but sadly found those jolly mugs belong, alas, to rubber bugs. Some ants strode in, they numbered six, but ants with spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of roses. The proud platoon turned up their noses. A fine bouquet concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. 
Miss Spider, watching from the wall, was not aware of them at all. The tea table was set for eight, with saucers, cups, and silver plate. The cakes were fresh, the service gleamed, yet no one would arrive, it seemed. Her company, in no demand, left her a cup for every hand. Nine spotted moss kept safe and warm and shelter from a thunderstorm. They stood beneath an open sash and watched the jagged lightning flash. Miss Spider dropped down on a thread, a silver tray above her head. She'd hoped to please them, but instead... They flew away in mortal dread. They left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. Ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then heard a cough and turned to see a small wet moth. A fragile thing so soaked by rain, his wings too damp to fly again. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry. Then lifting him with tender care, she tossed him gently in the air. The moth told Ike, then Ike told May, who went from bug to bug to say, there is no reason for alarm. She's never meant us any harm. So later on that afternoon, assembled in the dining room, 11 insects came to tea to share Miss Spidery's courtesy. 12 tender violets in a vase presented at Miss Spider's place. Set by her chair so neatly spun, she munched, munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see she ate just flowers, drank just tea. Miss Spider's reputation grew before too long our hostess knew each bug who crawled or hopped or flew and all their lovely children too. The End That was a great story. I always wanted to have a tea party with a tarantula. Darwin, would you like some tea? I don't mind if I do. I really like tea. I have a very big teacup. <gasps> Chocolate! I don't mind if I do. Mm. Wow, that was so much fun. Did you learn something? I know I sure did. So it's time for this week's challenge. I'm going to get out my explorer's hat and we're going on a bug hunt. I've got my bug house and I've got a net and I brought my magnifying glass. You never know what you might find. So let me just start looking around and see if we can find something. <gasps> What's this? I wonder if we can get that in our bug house. Let me try. And he's in. We've got something in the bug house. Let's go explore some more. Sometimes when you turn 
over a rock or something else, you find things under the rock. Let's look. Ants. We've got ants, but we're not gonna put ants in our bug house. But I see a worm over here as well. Ooh. That's cool. I found a frog. Oh, he <laughs> just leapt away. Did you see him? I found a couple of things over here in this flower box. There's some spiders. I'm not going to put them in my bug box. But you can see them. And maybe I'll look around in these leaves and see if we can find something else. I found another worm. I think I'll just put him back in the earth. Good spot. I wonder if we'll find something under here. <gasps> Looky there. A little woolly worm. He would go great in my bug box. That was cool. A dead tree stump. Ooh, this is a good place to look for bugs. Really a cool place. <gasps> Mushrooms. Pretty to look at, but we're definitely not going to put those in the bug box. I bet we find something around here. Here's something right here. I put him in the bug house. What a great bug hunt. We found three things for our bug house. This little guy who's running away. This one and this one. So remember, when you're bug hunting at home, when you're done, make sure you put everything back. Okay, we put all the critters back where we found them. Now it's your time to do the challenge. So you need to go on a bug hunt and leave us a picture in the comments of what you find or draw us a picture if you need to. We'd love to see how it goes. And we hope you learned something today and we hope you join us again on our next adventure, digging deeper in the wildlife.